Hey guys, we've been out riding in Santa Cruz all day and we're at this really hip coffee shop called Verve. It's beautiful if you get, ever make it down this way. Um, hanging out with the team. This is Evad. Am I saying this right? Absolutely. Every time. We tried to find a spot that was a little bit quieter because the wind was picking up. We were down at the beach earlier, got some good photos and stuff. Uh, we're looking at the Gazelle NL. Does that stand for Netherlands? Absolutely. Right, yeah. right. Royal Dutch Gazelle. This is from Amsterdam, guys. Uh, and it's one of their more affordable bikes, $29.99. It's got the same two-year comprehensive warranty with like 10 years on the frame. Really nice paint. That's something we're always talking about. They, they like double coat it and then they do a clear coat over the graphics and it's tested against like salt water and UV. And it's beautiful. I mean, you can see that the the fork here, the front rack, the rear rack, everything is paint matched, even these awesome Kirana fenders. It's plastic with like a little layer of aluminum above and below. So you get the lightweight quality of plastic and they're, they're kind of flexible, um, but they're a little bit more durable maybe than aluminum that can get bent easier. So it's just, it's just phenomenal. Safety wise, we've got these like cream white tires, love that with reflective sidewall stripes. Uh, these are 28 by two inches. So you get the lower attack angle plus the comfort of higher volume. I really appreciate that. The rims here, they've got these little reinforcement eyelets. It's giving you some extra strength, maybe to carry some, some cargo on that 10 kilogram max weight rated uh, front rack. And then we've got a standard rear rack that is Yep seat compatible. And Yep has a couple of different uh, models of like their maxi seat one that kind of interfaces in a square and that doesn't work here because of the rear rack battery but they do have one that sits on the side and again avod was telling me that that it is compatible and they've also got pannier hangers on the side so you could easily commute with this or you could take it out and get yourself like a milk box or whatever like this i actually think this looks really cool and just set that right up there on front of the bike maybe do your grocery shopping or put some kitties in there some puppies and just have a blast um, it's a comfortable bike too. That's something that, you know, when you, when you get to a bike like this and you look at like a rigid fork, like there's no suspension up there, but again, higher air volume because of the tires and lowered attack angle, smooth things out. And then up here, we've got this adjustable angle stem. It's a quill stem, so it can kind of go up and down a little bit, really swept back, almost like cruiser bars with these ergonomic grips. You get this nice upright body position where you can just spot the traffic, say hey to your friends and maybe not be bending over and have your neck and back quite so sensitive. And then this saddle, I really like this saddle a lot. Celly Royale, it's got these springs in here that you really feel. You know, we, it, it is kind of bumpy around here going near the beach and stuff. And I've been asking these guys if they'd let me borrow the comfortable bikes. And I, I, I've been appreciating it. My back, my knees and stuff are a little bit sensitive. So I'm, I'm loving this bike. Uh, plastic, kind of, you know, interesting pedals. I, there's a lot of Gazelle branding here. Everything from like the nuts up on that uh, front axle to the pedals to some of the, just the other, look at this, Gazelle NL. So this is, you know, this is a high quality company. They're, they're part of the Pong Group, which owns Kalkoff and Focus and Faraday and now Santa Cruz Bikes. And that's why we're in Santa Cruz, California right now. Um, they, they've got the economies of scale down. So again, $29.99 for the warranty, for all the racks, for the fenders, the integrated lights, you know, safety is a big deal for me. So you've got a light right here that runs off the main battery. You don't have to remember to go and like turn it on and off every time or replace the batteries. It all runs off this really high quality Bosch Power Pack 500. And you might have an older e-bike with a rack battery like this, the 400. It's, they're cross compatible, so they both work. And if you go on vacation somewhere and maybe you want to rent or borrow, uh, another pack to go super far. This thing, you know, it's rated like 40 to 100 miles, depending on the assist level that you choose. We are dealing with a higher performance line um, Bosch mid-drive motor here. And that's, that's interesting for me because a lot of the more affordable or kind of relaxed cruiser style bikes are, are going with the new active line motor. Um, it's a little bit lighter, but it doesn't provide as much uh, torque support. So this one's up to 63 Newton meters and higher cadence support so 120 rpm which means you can just spin faster if you want to go faster you don't have to switch gears as frequently uh, one of the cool things about this particular bike is that it has the the inter 8 so that's shimano nexus inter 8 you can shift those gears at standstill this is not hurting the bike at all and you can do that at a stop sign or at the base of a hill whenever you need to shift and you can see exactly what gear you're in so it's just a very intuitive um, interface I, I really like that even the bell Kind of fun right uh, and then that's the control pad we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, there's even something going on here with with like the headset and the stem uh, you can twist this to the left a little bit 
and then it it locks out so see see how there's like a little lock icon and then those handlebars won't turn so you won't dump the load in the front let's pretend that we so we kind of unlock it and then if you turn see how the the bucket's going to kind of turn too um, and that could drop drop your basket of course you'd want to have this like bungee or zip tied or something like this i'm going to go ahead and take this off um, that is one of the trade-offs of uh kind of an integrated front rack like a lot of times you'll see these racks that are like they don't turn when you turn that can be a little bit confusing though when you're when you're steering the bike because you're like am i turning what's going on this one i think it's actually a little bit of a cheaper design but because you have that that locking system up front it's easier to load and it's just a little bit more stable when you're parked so here's the headlight looks like this is maybe a little bit aimable as well it runs off that main battery really bright um, just yeah it connects really well with the bike and it sounds like the tire colors are variable depending on what color of frame you get and there are tons of colors on this one so there's like a gloss black a matte black this nice blue a, a, a rose a rose and a jeans blue it jeans blue yeah. oh man yeah, at man. the ready good I job mean, we bought. got some uh, we got some feedback about let's say our gazelle bikes here in the u.s as long as they're black you be able to buy a gazelle yeah and right now in 2018 we have like tons of colors so we've been listening to our customers and uh yes and yes. three frame sizes and three fra frame sizes that's it's fantastic. unbelievable so, yeah. and that's in addition to a step through frame design with an adjustable angle stem and a saddle that can go pretty low i did notice you can see here where the springs have been hitting that rear rack a little bit so there's a kind of enough clearance here but it's a little bit tight and it's tough because if you put the battery and the rack even further you know ideally all the weight would be low and center on the frame but then it's harder to step through so you know i think it is thoughtfully engineered but there are always those trade-offs and i want to point out that uh this fender it connects like you know several places right that's the fender so it doesn't rattle but the rack it looks like it's freestanding but it's actually connected with a metal piece down here so it's very solid very sturdy and then the double tubing right here that keeps the frame stiffer so you don't get as much frame flex and and wobble sometimes you get on a bike like this and it might even happen on this bike if you really load up that front rack the you know the steering changes there is a little bit more weight here the bike itself also weighs a little bit more 62.8 pounds this is the heaviest bike we've looked at today yeah and i think the bike is uh, really designed around let's say uh someone who's using a bike for multiple purposes um it really um is an alternative to a real cargo bike which is normally a lot longer a lot wider and a lot of people don't have that space in the garage so we really have like a compact utility bike yeah that you can just you know load up with a front like basket and you can put your kits on it and it really you know uh, doesn't take all that much space uh, in your garage yeah. or let's say in your house it's a good point and uh, and that's also the reason why we got like the the bigger kickstand makes yeah. it very stable double leg down yeah there. absolutely yeah so it's it's an alternative to a cargo bike it's really a multi-purpose uh, utility bike basically yeah that's very cool At, and would you mind helping me with the the cafe lock yeah. so whenever you just you know want to hop on and off like uh, the cafe just to order your cup of coffee or something what you can do is basically you can lock it and how do you do that is by turning the uh, the key on your left hand side and uh, and then pulling it down with your other hand like the handle yeah over here and it's that you, rod through yeah and then you have like your key and the keys are normally numbered, which is for this one too. You normally get, let's say, two keys. Mm -hmm. And whenever you lose your key, we can also like, you know, replace those. But then you have to like put a formal like request in. Um, but the keys, um, uh, there's a one key system. So this one key will also work on the lock of the battery. Yeah. So you can turn that again and then you can pull out the battery. Beautiful. Yeah. Slides so, right out. You know, some people like leave their bike in their little townhouse or whatever it is, and they don't have a power socket in there. So they can walk inside of the house and charge it over there. Yeah. Or you can just charge it off, let's say the battery itself. And it's over here, of course. Right. So there's a charging port on the bike. So yeah, you can roll it into your garage. Uh, I love that there's a handle built into the back of this battery. These do weigh slightly more than the power pack that fits onto the down tube. Uh, those are like 5.8 pounds. This one's about 6.1 pounds. So it's not it's not a whole lot extra, but you know I do want to call that out. And as far as charging goes, I have a battery charger with us, and this is one of my favorites. 
It's the, the Bosch 4 amp charger. So it's a little bit faster. A lot of chargers are only two amp and it's got that proprietary plug on the other end. It's not gonna get confused with your other electronics and stuff. It's a good setup. For people that might be new to e-bikes, you wanna, you wanna avoid extreme heat, extreme cold with that battery when you're charging it or storing it. Try not to let it go below 20%. So if you're over here on the battery and you press this little button, see there's these LEDs. So right now we're at roughly 80% or maybe 75. Um, and when we did that, it activated the display. Otherwise you'd press the power button right here. And I'm gonna do that. So it says, see ya. And it looks like this one's locked down too. There's a set screw that you can add so that people can't take the display and they do that for demo bikes a lot. But otherwise you could take this display off put it in your pocket and take it in with you so that at the bike rack, no one's gonna scratch this thing accidentally. It's not gonna get the sun and the rain damage. However, the Bosch Intuvia, that's what this display is called. It's very durable, probably pretty easy to replace. And while we're talking about durability, um, I just wanna point out again that with an internally geared hub, these weigh a little bit more, but they give you shifting at standstill. And there's only one sprocket in the rear. I believe that's like 18 tooth and then uh, a single chain ring up front, 15 tooth. So the chain is super tight the whole time and it's completely enclosed in this plastic guard. So when you're pedaling, whether you have a skirt on or pants or whatever, they're not gonna touch the chain. It's it's a good clean setup. And I love that the way that this, this mid-mounted kickstand is positioned, you can actually still pedal backwards. It's not gonna get pedal lock. Um, and if you slip off, you're not gonna cut your shins, which is kind of nice because this is rubberized. So it's a, it's a good setup. I feel like they've chosen parts here that, that complement the the, the use case for the bike really well. And, and the bigger display for me, it is adjustable angle. It kind of swivels a little bit. We've got an adjustable angle bar too, kind of rise up. You can see it. If you're nearsighted like I am, it's, you're not struggling to like, oh, what's going on and getting confused. The buttons are easy to reach. So you don't have to worry about looking down and trying to memorize. You, you just feel it. There's this I button in the middle. It's rubberized, minus and plus. It's that simple. And then these other buttons here are just, you know, occasionally you can use them if you need to change the menu. So. I hit the, the power button, it's booting up. It says, okay, yep, four out of five battery. And then we're in off mode. So it's just a bicycle right now, but it would run the lights. So if I press the light button for a second here, you can see the light icon appear. And there we go, it's all working. Everything's all set up. I, I just love how intuitive that is. There's a button for lights. You don't have to memorize any special keystrokes or combinations. The I button, it's duplicated in both places. And as you press that, it goes from max speed to average speed, trip time, and then range, That is. this is the really cool menu. So again, we aren't fully charged on our battery here, but if we go up to Eco, that's the lowest level of assist, it says, you know, almost 60 miles, 59 miles, but not even with a full battery. Um, that's pretty great. And, you know, Eco mode basically just takes the edge off of the additional weight and the tire friction and stuff. It, it feels more like a regular bicycle. And we keep pressing up over here with the plus button. Turbo says, okay, 21 miles. So between the two, you can kind of adjust and say, okay, well, I, I, 30 miles is how far I need to go. Great, you know, I can get 30 miles in tour, but I'm gonna be on the safe side and go with eco part of the time when I'm on flat sections and just save the juice for my climbs or whatever, right? I really love that about the, the Bosch display. Um, and then you can keep pressing the I button here and go to odometer and trip distance and clock and back to max speed. So there's a lot of great information here. This is, it's faintly blacklit, kind of a bluish glow. So at night it will still be visible to you. Um, and I think that's that's kind of it. There's the cockpit, pretty simple, easy to read, easy to, to understand. And yeah, just, just a, a nice bike, kind of kind of a fun bike. And again, the price point to me is pretty impressive. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the history of Gazelle or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think what is really nice in this bike as well is that it has a walk assist, especially because it's oh, a little heavier. That's a great point. Going, you know, it's like, you know, walking out of your garage or something and you have a little bit of Or the basement. I hear that basement. people have like basements yeah. in the Netherlands. They have to get there, or maybe it's in other parts of Europe. Yeah, we have basements, which are probably like four meters under sea level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's why I paused because I was like, do they have basements? Yeah, uh, yeah we do. Yeah, some, some people do. And there's like this ramp that sometimes kind of steep yeah and then you can kind of roll up your bike really easily so explain walk mode for those of us oh who yeah don't know. so what you do is like you press like the the plus button over here on on the top and you see walk assist so there it yeah, is you can see that and then what you do is basically you press the walk and then you see let's say Look that. the pedals go it's going itself so and he, it's like two and a half miles per hour <laughs> So it's really slow. It's only on our 2018 models. Oh. And uh, we just opened it up. Like um, it's like a software thing that you get to do. I'm glad and you did like, that. Yeah. Cause yeah, in 2017 and maybe before. We didn't always have it. And yeah, uh, yeah we added it to, uh, to, to our bikes. Okay. Yeah. So 
been around for 125 years right yeah it's been a while i mean uh, i haven't been uh, around for 125 <laughs> years yeah i know thanks it's california that's doing it no uh yeah the company was founded by uh by aronson and colin like 125 years ago it was like it started off with a blacksmith a uh, a postman and uh and another guy that was like you know thinking of like you know getting mail delivered quicker and uh, it was uh it's a it's a company it's like an hour uh, east of Amsterdam. And you're from Amsterdam, I right? am from Amsterdam, yeah. yeah. We moved over here uh, specifically for, you know, setting up the Gazelle office here with our local team. Yeah. And um, it's Well, let's a, see those guys. We met them earlier. I'm yeah, going to cut to see what those guys are up to. Okay, Gabe's taking us up to the offices, get to see some behind the scenes. Is there anything in here that shouldn't be filmed? This is, this is top <laughs> secret. Whoa, look at this. What is going on? Is this a prototype? Well, I like your office, guys. You got the beautiful plants and some bikes, some different colors and stuff. This yeah. is this is a very collaborative space here. Like no walls. Yeah. 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 Very awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I wish there were walls oh, sometimes. Look at these different colors and stuff. This is the one we were talking about, the coral, right? Yeah, it's like a rose kind of. Uh, yeah, a rose. Rose. Okay. Well, I got the ocean on the brain. I think is what's happening yeah. here. This is really nice too. I remember seeing the, just the way that integrating some of the cables and the, the Dutch design, like super upright. Mm -hmm. Wow, is, what, what's going on with this map, Gabe? Uh, this is our uh, <laughs> top secret. Should I not film that? Is it... Oh, so the orange pins are like retailers? Yep. Yeah. New wheel, boop. Okay, let's go over here to check New York. Propel, right? <laughs> yes, love it. Okay, very cool, very cool. Sorry to interrupt you guys. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So back to you, what were you, where were we at? Yeah, I mean, and those two guys were, uh, Aronson and Colin, were actually uh, looking, uh, were walking around through the forest and they saw a gazelle. And they were thinking of like setting up a company, a bike company, and they said, that gazelle, that is kind of, it's robust, it's maneuverable, and it's light. And in that like, three values we are always designing our bikes so it needs to be very maneuverable it needs to be light and it needs to be uh, robust as well so it can you know with withhold for for a while and um, so we make bikes not for just a year or two years uh, we make bikes for people to have those bikes for a long long time well this is not a super lightweight bike i hate to break it to you avon oh absolutely that's why it's an e-bike <laughs> that's a good point he's uh, ready for me okay so the, no, the reason the, the, i think it is true what you're saying it is is definitely one of our our, our heaviest bikes uh, but it's uh, it's uh, it's really a multi-purpose bike. So it, it's because of like the oversized racks, the oversized frame, yeah, um, the really like thick tires. Uh, the internally geared hub adds weight. The higher higher power Bosch motor adds weight. The yeah. higher capacity battery adds weight. Like it, there's kind of no way around it. Um, and frankly, to be honest with you guys, this one has a steel fork and steel handlebars, and I weigh all the bikes myself. The real real version of this might be a couple pounds lighter. Yeah, the real version might be a little bit uh, lighter. But uh, it's we don't deny that this bike is pretty heavy. Uh, you should try it out and, and see whether you like it. A gate was saying, I think it's the best bike to to use for your farmer's market kind of oh. uh, go to. This is Gabe, by the yeah. way. Hey, Gabe. Hey. Yeah, he goes to the farmer market a lot. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the best bike for those kind of things. You know, as far as car replacement goes, you know, it can be your full utility bike. You can throw on panniers on the back. Yeah. Put a basket on the front, throw your groceries, some uh, some Dutch tulips. That's right. Yeah, it's funny because like, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, her wife, um, she has one of these bikes and she has a front and rear basket and in the front basket her dog goes uh -huh. and in the rear basket like all our groceries go. And of course here in Santa Cruz, you know, we like to go mountain biking or going back into the hills. And she takes this bike actually up the hill <laughs> over a fire road and just, you know, that she hangs out there on yeah. the, on the, uh, on the bench and has a brilliant view over the bay. But, um, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a bike that really, uh, has a lot of, let's say opportunity to, you know, take around and it's a perfect car replacement bike. I would say, yeah, my okay. wife has one of those. Really? And she, she yeah, she does. One? What color? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's rose. Oh, she likes so, the rose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not as like pink, pink as, uh, as, as, as you would imagine pink is. It's actually a really like, like Pantone kind of color pink. Hmm. And, uh, 
you know, she does her groceries too. You know, we moved over from Amsterdam to, to the US and one of the things, like we love everything. The only thing that we don't really like is that everything is so far away. Yeah. And uh, we used to like walk to a grocery store to get groceries. And now we have an e-bike uh, and then the Gazelle NL just to do that. And it's just, you know, helps us to just get out of the car and, uh, and, uh, and get around and get our groceries and, yeah. you know, go to a coffee place and it's a hang it's out. A hang out. It's great. And you have, so Avod has the high speed. This is the Gazelle City Zen Speed T10, which yeah, I'm also going to be absolutely. reviewing. And yeah. it's a little bit, you know, yeah, a little bit lighter, a little bit faster. Yeah, it gets me to work really fast. You know, it's like for me, it's all about efficiency. So uh, uh, I leave my home at eight o'clock and I'm getting to the office at 8.15. That's what I want. <laughs> wow, that's, that is fast, man. You yeah. must. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way of getting around in town. And we're also covering the Arroyo C8, which is kind of in between. So it's like, you know, this is a little bit sporty, but, well, very sporty, then a little bit a little bit more relaxed and stuff, and then we have just the fun mobile over there. Yeah, so. it's just uh, the, the, the comfort revolution, I would say, right? Yeah, <laughs> love it. Well, guys, I think that's uh, a great coverage. It's been fun to get a little bit of you know, company history and yeah, yeah, a little absolutely. bit of a chat. So we might hit the trails and go get some ride footage. Okay, I'm about to go for a ride. And one of the things I noticed about the uh, the kickstand here is it's just, a, it's a little bit more work. You kind of have to push the bike forward and put your foot down. There we go. And then it doesn't have quite as much ground clearance as a side mounted stand. But again, it creates a really stable loading platform. So I appreciate that. And then these hydraulic rim brakes, they're quite powerful. You know, they have a, tool free adjustable reach so you can bring them in a little bit if you're someone with petite hands or maybe you're wearing gloves it's the winter time or something they work really great they provide ample stopping power um, and they also free up that central hub area right there for parking at uh, bike racks because sometimes you know there's the the style of racks where you you put the front wheel really close to like a kind of a metal u-shaped thing on the ground and then that can collide with that disc brake and bend it and then you get zinging and kind of rubbing. So these are a little bit more durable and I guess that's that's why they spec them specifically in the Netherlands because they found that people were kind of banging up their, their disc brakes um, but they wanted the stopping power of a hydraulic system. So I think these are these are quite good. They do you know rub on the side of the, the rim. That's a machine sidewall right there but you can see these are very nice rims. They have uh, eyelided holes there with reinforcement eyelets, a little bit thicker gauge spokes. Um, extra strong spokes, in fact. Now we're gonna go for a ride, and it's it's windy. You hear the wind. That's when it's nice to have a little bit of assist power to help get you through it. So let's do it. I'm I'm back up in turbo, just pedaling along. It's relatively quiet when you're in a higher gear because my pedal rotation is slow, but now come to a stop. I'm gonna shift gears. I don't even have to be pedaling. So I'm down at the lower gears. I'm gonna go in gear number two. Woo. A little bit more pronounced, uh, but we're getting a lot more power. So that's the power of a mid drive. And then here's, you know, the stability test. Oh boy, I think the wind is having an effect. We just drove over some glass. Hopefully those puncture resistant tires are holding up. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, but there, there is a little bit of frame flex, you know, because the battery, it's just up high and it's in the rear. So there, there are always trade-offs in terms of design, and how the bike fits and uh, handles and stuff. But overall, you know, it feels like this one's doing a pretty good job. It's getting, it's, it's definitely a good fit for this particular use case. Okay guys, from here, you should be able to sort of hear that motor um, yeah, it's it's definitely specked up a little bit for what I consider to be a cruiser neighborhood type of bike. Um, the motor controller measures rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque like a thousand times per second. It supports up to 120 RPM. It's just very responsive, um, almost overkill for a bike like this. But then again, when you've got a bunch of weight loaded onto it, or maybe you have to deal with a hill, like Avod was saying earlier about one of their coworkers, it's really nice to have that. It's a little bit heavier and it makes a little bit more noise. There's a little bit more friction in there because there's a reduction gearing. The sprocket's 15 tooth and spinning two and a half revolutions per every crank revolution. So every time your pedals go around, that sprocket's spinning twice, two and a half times. 
um, but it works really well. So I'm gonna pedal along and maybe shift through the gears. It also has shift detection, so it's not gonna it's not gonna mash and, and wear out the transition or the transmission um, as as easily. So here we go. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist, so you can hear it. It'll be more pronounced. Nice, just smooth, yeah, powerful, zippy. I didn't have a problem this time, but I've noticed that sometimes with the Shimano Nexus, if you're shifting gears while you're pedaling and while the motor is putting force on the on the chain and everything, it sometimes it goes click, 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 and that just means it's it's kind of a self protection mechanism, so it, it won't grind the gears inside. So that's that's really great. Um, yeah, it's definitely working well. Okay, guys, we got the bike up in turbo. There's no boxes or anything loaded to it, but we did find a little hill just right over here, and I thought it'd be a good chance to demonstrate the, the climbing power of the Bosch Performance Line motors. They do really well, especially if you shift gears down, and then being able to shift at standstill like this, you can take it all the way down. As long as you just kind of like ease off the pedal for a second, it, it engages, and we should be able to climb no problem. So uh, lead on, Avod. Go for it. Sweet. So it's actually telling me to shift up, like we could go a little bit faster, but no problem. Just sitting down, it's climbing, not going especially fast, because again, I'm in the first gear, but it's definitely, we're definitely getting there. beautiful. Ivad was saying he commutes on this bike path to work on the daily. Gosh, and just look at that. Look at the beautiful ocean. It's just quiet. Look at this. Just gorgeous. Well, it was a little bit windy out there, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was great to, to hang out with both of you guys, Gabe, Avad. I appreciate uh, your hospitality and just, you know, getting to check out these bikes. For the full written review, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com where I have measured standover height, minimum saddle height, width, length, so you know if it fits in your garage. And that was a really good point, how this thing is like, it's kind of a cargo bike, but but shorter, you know? Very yeah, utilitarian. Yeah. This yeah. has been good. This has been great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, ride safe, guys. Yeah, enjoy the yeah. ride. <laughs> of uh, pool of uh, bike companies. Yeah, Not going on. The concentration of industry.